We started unloading this, guys, but this is what we went and picked up. It is a Dana 44. Uh, it's actually kind of a four drop, but it's correct for the LS swaps vehicles. Um, it is a Dana 44. It does have the reed racing knuckle on this side with the high, high steer cross steer. So it's cross steer and high steer. So it gets the steering up out of the way so you don't hit stuff and bend stuff up. Uh, we have the rest of that also. It does have, it is a Dana 44 still, but it does have the big Dana 60 style uh, large hubs, eight lug. Um, and the most important thing, this is for the Bruce. And with those 44s, this does have 513 gears in it. So the Bruce is getting 513 gears, which is drastically going to help performance and actually make this thing <clears throat> capable of maybe slinging some mud. All right, guys, so while we're moving all this stuff around, cleaning up today, we're going to actually take care of a couple things, too. One of them is we're going to check this Dana 44 out. It is supposed to have 513 gears in it, but before I order uh, the rear gear kit for the 14 bolt, I do want to confirm that. I did, when I bought this, spun it, and it's definitely in the 5 range, but uh, let's definitely pop this cover. We can inspect what's actually inside. It's supposed to have a locker. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll pop this cover off, make sure everything looks decent, and confirm the gear ratio before we order our rear gear set. We actually have fluid coming out already, and it's, uh, so far the fluid looks extremely clean. Um, one more bolt, and then we'll actually be inside. The drain for a second. All right, we have that drain, so let's go ahead and let this down nice and gentle so it doesn't fall off the jack stand. Uh, let's see if we can get that propped up about there. All right, so we got that propped up, and I'll tell you right now, it does not have a locker. Um, that's 100% sure, no locker, but it is a full spool, so um definitely gonna spin both wheels all the time unless you break an axle uh the the spools are a little bit more a little tougher on axles but definitely a full spool so let's go ahead and check this gear ratio uh, we'll get that spun around and there are markings on there we can also count the teeth i can tell it's definitely a high ratio um chances are it is a 513 but let's confirm that before we actually order our gear kit we are into this dana 44 that we bought uh, for the bruce um, right away i did notice as i was loading it this upper ball joint and i'm not sure why it looks fairly new but it does have some play in it so um there's no cotter pin in it but the nut is tight and it seems to have play in the joint so we'll have to address that um, I guess it was probably just off-road and abused a little bit. So we'll we'll go ahead and probably put two new ball joints in. We'll check this side while we're at it. This actually looks like factory ball joints still. They have been replaced, but for some reason they have play in them. So we're into this. We do not have a locker. And this is why you check this stuff. I mean, I, I don't think the guy purposely lied or anything like that. I don't think he actually built this axle. Um, so maybe he, he bought it like this. I don't know. It doesn't really matter at this point. We do have a full spool. So it's not a mini spool. It's not a locker. It is a full spool. And if you know, if you can don't know and you need to tell the difference, um, it's just all s solid. So there's a hub your ring gear bolts onto and the rest of it's a piece of machined, uh, metal that your axle slide into with splines inside here on both directions. So it's full time. If this ring gear is spinning and your axles aren't broke, both axles will spin at the same speed. So a little bit more difficult for maneuverability. You don't really want this for trails unless you're gonna get out and lock and unlock hubs at certain points because um, it does cut down on turning radius. That being said, we know we have a full spool. We know it's a Dana 44. Uh, we know it's four drop. 
or uh, driver side drop anyway so it's correct for us i did measure the spring perches we will have to cut and move them not a big deal we did that before um, and then we can get our pinion angle perfect for this setup it does have high steer high cross steer high steer so that's also good for our setup um, now to the ring gear ratio there's a bunch of numbers here uh, 10 5 0 2 0 that's probably a part number or something um, it does say D 44 so that's Dana 44 and then surprisingly I don't know if you can actually see that it does say D 3 8 or no I'm sorry D 44 5 3 8 F so I don't think these are 513s. I think these are actually 538 gears. So that's why you check these things. Again, I don't think the guy purposely lied to us or anything like that. Um, and honestly, I'd rather have 513s. So I'm hoping at this point they are 513s. Um, and that's actually better for our 44s but we definitely need to know this information before we order our rear gear set because they make 513s they also make 538s so the listing clearly said 513s but again i'm hoping at this point it actually is 538s so if you don't know how to uh, calculate ring gear ratio or ring and pinion ratio you're pretty much going to just take and count the teeth so the, the pinion is inside there. You're gonna count the teeth on that. You're gonna count the, the teeth on the ring gear and you're gonna divide the two. And whatever that comes out to is your ratio. So on our uh, pinion there, we have eight teeth. Now we need to actually mark, well, we'll use this, it looks like it says 43, someone put there. We'll use that and start there, count our way around. Sorry for the wind noise and um, then just divide the two. We actually have 43 teeth on the ring gear, which makes sense because there actually is a 43 there. So if we take, so if we take 43 and divide by eight, you probably can't see that at all, but it comes out 5.375. So this is in fact a 538 gear set. So very, very glad we checked that. Not, up, not upset at all about that because it's actually better uh, gear ratio for our 44 inch foggers that we have on the Bruce. Um, but now we can just go ahead and order the correct ones for the 14 volt. So a very, very big lesson here. Don't trust, uh, almost do double check before you spend money on another part. Make sure when you don't personally assemble it, even if you had a shop assemble this, there's no 100% guarantee that they put what you ask in it. So this is a 5, 538 gear. Um, one thing worth mentioning though, especially on like a Dana 44 has a smaller ring gear than say a Dana 60 or a nine inch. So especially on the pinion there we're we're shrunk down now to eight gears or eight teeth on that gear uh, for instance a 410 ratio would have 10 um, teeth on that gear so it's actually stronger than say this 538 with only eight teeth on that pinion so uh, that can be become an issue for like high power you want lower gear ratio for the tire size but the higher power this could be an issue so um, definitely if you have the choice go with the the rear housing with the larger ring gear so then it'll also have a larger pinion pinion to, to go along with it so it, it, it will actually have more strength to it Yes, I know yeah, Dana 44 is not idea for this uh, situation. 44s and a Dana 44 are kind of a bad recipe when you have power and some weight to it. Um, but this was together. It was a reasonable price and I'm still happy with the purchase. So we're going to keep going with along with this. And we did get this Dr. Z's uh, front diff cover. You can see the Z on it. And this thing is literally quarter inch thick plate steel. It is extremely heavy. If you mess that up, you definitely did something you're not supposed to. I'm pretty sure if you ran into a, a giant boulder head on, you'd probably break the housing before you would do any real damage to that thing. And while, while we're here, you know, just spinning this thing around, I, I do think that the setup isn't 100% right 
with this. You can see the wear pattern isn't 100% the way it should be. It's already set up. I don't really want to go in and completely change it. One thing I did notice is the pinion seems to spin pretty freely. Um, and I, it's hard to tell, but I think there might be a tiny bit of play in. So I don't think they got the preload right on the pinion bearing and or maybe it's just got some wear. Um, the seal actually was seeping a tiny bit, so we're probably gonna pop the, the yoke off this thing, do a new pinion seal at the least, and maybe put a little bit more torque and try and tighten the, the bearing preload up a little bit. It's a little more difficult when it's assembled, but um, this thing's not gonna be running down the highway at 80 mile an hour, so it's gonna have very little use on it anyway, but we'll try and make it as 100% as we can as we go through this thing. Anyway, the moral of this video is always check uh, your, don't trust anyone when you're buying, um, unless you actually saw it put in yourself. Um, always double check, um, saved us buying the wrong gears for the back end of uh, the Civic here. So if we would have went ahead and ordered, which I was about ready to a couple of times, the 513s for the back, the 14 bolt, they would have been wrong. So we are now getting 538 gears and that's fine. That's even better. So just keep that in mind as you're building projects, make sure everything matches and don't take people's word for it. That's why it's hard to sell it in an engine that's together, especially that isn't running, same kind of deal. Uh, you're taking their word for the internals. But anyway, thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a good day.